Okay, so I forgot to mention yesterday that I took my heart rate. I mean, completely unscientifically. I just had my roommate run her phone for 15 seconds and did this. Um, but before the beta blockers, it was 80. And after the beta blockers, it was 80. So that's... Hopefully, I mean, it was only one time. It's probably something I'm going to need to do for a few nights just to make sure. But I don't think slowing my heart rate is going to be a side effect I'm going to have to worry about. And I don't feel, I mean, I took the, I took it, you know, like 7 o'clock this morning and I'm fine. So, I think we can conclude that it, the, side, the side effects are fairly mild. <clears throat> and, uh, and I'll be okay. Uh, I did talk to UCLA on the phone this afternoon, or late this morning. And it's interesting that they always seem put out when you're asking them questions. Like, well, what do I need to do? Do I not need to eat? Can I take my meds? And the one was like, well, they should have sent you the packet with what to do. And I was like, they didn't. They never do. They didn't even tell me that first time I was supposed to be there early to get my blood drawn. It was just... It was not on the my if it was if it's not on my chart I'm not gonna see it because they're not mailing me anything they're not calling me and if they are calling me they're not leaving messages I mean obviously I answer when I recognize the number so it's like and you know like the hepatologist didn't see me that day I I understand that these are specialists that are extremely busy and they see a lot of people. You know, and a lot of people much sicker than me. I understand completely. I am not complaining, especially about the hepatologist not seeing me. It's life. Um, however, it does tell me uh, that when it comes to little things like admin, I'm going to have to just keep asking questions because they're not going to send me the packets ahead of time. Sometimes, I mean, they did with the liver transplant book, but I think that's just something they send to everybody. That's just normal. You know, I didn't get the schedule which told me I was going to the, which told me my appointment to get my blood drawn was at seven uh, the first time until like the third consult, the the nurse practitioner is when she is the one who gave me the schedule that let me know that I had not made the blood draw. And when I told her that nobody had told me, I had no idea. She's like, yeah, that happens all the time. So they know, they know that they're not doing the things to help people. So if you know that, then there's no reason to be put out. I mean, you asked me if I had any questions. So you're like, oh, well, they just should have sent you that in the, you know, and I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, if I, if I had the information, I would not be asking you because I wouldn't want to waste your time or mine. So needless to say, uh, I can't have caffeine from my, my first appointment at seven. So technically I shouldn't have had caffeine from seven this morning. Didn't know that I had a, a Mexican Coke, but that would have been at like seven or slightly before. So like... I don't think it's going to cause a problem because it was 24 hours and I just didn't have my coffee today. I can take my pills in the morning, but I can't eat four hours ahead of time. So I can't take my pills. I'm not going to take Ursodial, um, fiber, uh, a beta blocker and my cranberry slash probiotics prebiotics pill on an empty stomach I'm just not doing it so I will have to just take them with me and take them after apparently I'll be at the cardiologist area for four hours which yeah um, echo stress test consult and then I'll have my bone scan and then I will be done with UCLA for now until they call me and let me know if I'm on the list which I'm almost certain to be I think in a few months, though, if my Billy Rubin keeps going down, I will probably be taken off the list. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm out of danger at all. It just means that I won't be... I won't need a transplant for a while. I mean, it doesn't matter being on... I, I was deathly afraid of being on the list before, and I was like, I can't do it. I, I'm going to have to, like, opt out of, you know, everything. If I get on that list because I don't want to, I don't, but you know, 
I didn't mean that. It's just very scary, and I've never dealt with anything on this scale before, so I'm going to say things in the moment that, I mean, I'm scared. I'm a person. I, I try very hard to not impose on people and not, like, let my emotions get messy. Uh, it's all part of, like, not allowing myself to be like my dad, where his temper just rules his whole life. And I don't want that. So I, 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 have, I have tried to, to master my emotions because nobody wants to deal with someone who's a wreck. Nobody wants to deal with someone who's a mess. Nobody wants to deal with someone who constantly talks about how they're in pain or how this, this sucks or, or this illness. So I don't do it. I don't ask for anything from people. And I know that that eventually that becomes a problem too because like you know we need people in our lives I get it but this is how I've cultivated my life and this is how I'm more comfortable being so but I am giving myself a lot more allowances because I'm really sick I'm <laughs> like mortally ill and uh, it's chronic and fatal eventually so it's okay to be a little messy sometimes and I, and I give myself that and for me messy looks like coming into my room closing the door and not seeing anybody and and that's okay that's we all have different ways of dealing with situations and mine is I just want to be alone leave me alone and sometimes I do not want to talk I just I just do not want to fucking sorry I don't want to open my mouth and I don't want to talk to anybody. That goes back to my childhood where I was never really nonverbal. Uh, I've always been, you know, developmentally on track with that. But first thing in the morning, I was nonverbal. Like, I would, I would be at my grandma's house, my dad's mom, Betty's house, and she'd be cooking me breakfast. And she would just know, like, for the first hour or so, because I, I always get up. Not nowadays, but back in the day. I never stayed in bed past nine. So I don't know, I'd get up like seven or eight, whatever, and she'd be, you know, cooking for me. I was a little kid, and she knew that I wasn't going to talk. I mean, she would be chirpy and cheerful with me, and I, you know, I, I wouldn't be rude to her, but I was just nonverbal. And, uh, people don't like that when you're an adult and you're nonverbal, but sometimes it happens. Sometimes I can't help it, and there's nothing I can say, and there's nothing anybody can do to make me able to talk um, and, and that's my dad would find that maddening when I would retreat so far that I just I wasn't I wasn't available to acknowledge or answer or whatever my dad was also one of those people that would get furious if you ever said I don't know you were never allowed to not know something you had to tell him something but if you genuinely didn't know then you'd get yelled at for 20 minutes till he got tired and then he would dismiss you. Well, me. He never did that to anybody else. Well, he did it to my mom. To my mom and me. Not to my brother. Not to anybody else in his life. So. So, yeah. The point is, I've watched him my whole life and I don't want to be emotionally messy like him or anybody. Like, there's a... There's a um, there's a friend of a family member now who's going through a lot of medical issues and she's very entitled and very lazy and very angry and very violent and that is also another thing that I most definitely don't want to put out there myself. It's like reminding me like this is the opposite of who you want to be in this situation because I'm also sick but I'm also like ostensibly I'm also more healthy. I'm, I'm not bed bound. I'm not I'm fine. I feel fine. Everything about me is okay. It's just that inside, I'm not. <laughs> anyway, I really just meant this to be an update about the, the beta blocker, but I just get to talking. So I guess the next time you see me, I'll probably be at UCLA for a quick second. And then after, I'll, of course, let you know what happens. So until then, talk to you later.